Hi friends, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards. And I'm really excited about the conversation we've already begun in our previous segment on the subject, not of finance this time, not of stewardship, but on the subject of the move of God that is occurring in our country as I record this. And as we see God breaking through to a group of college students and faculty and professors, and now people flooding in from dozens of colleges in the region, some Christian, some secular, we can see that the God of the Bible, the God who revives his people in the Old Testament and the New, is the same God that we serve today. And whether we live across the, the seas, where we've seen revivals in recent days in places as far flung as the Philippines, Cambodia, uh, India, and so on, that same God is desiring to reach down and touch the hearts of his people and draw them him, to himself even today. And that's what we've seen at the campus of Asbury in Kentucky. Asbury University has seen this before, back in 1970, and it seems eerily similar to what we saw then that started last week, February 8th of 2023. And now I wanted to, in this segment, give you some distinguishing marks. That's a term given to us by one of the great minds of our country, a man by the name of Jonathan Edwards, who served as a prestigious college president, pastor in Northfield, and is considered one of the greatest minds that our country has ever produced during the first Great Awakening. And at that time, there were messy things. You know, when God's Spirit touches a person's heart, their experiences, their way of worshiping, um, their traditions are what's going to come out. And it might not be in complete alignment with your experiences, your way of worshiping, your traditions, and so forth. But what we discover is that when it's a true work of God, there, there comes a sudden unity amongst God's people around the desire to glorify and lift up the name of Jesus Christ and to tell others about him and his gospel. And of course, that gospel is very clear that Jesus died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and he, ra he was risen from the dead by the Father on the third day, according to the scriptures, and now offers salvation to people everywhere, in every culture, in every conceivable situation, there's nothing that you can do that can separate you from the access to the love of God. And so what's going to happen now is that this is going to spread because, you know, this is the first significant move we've seen in our country since the advent, the widespread acceptance of social media. And today you can hop on social media, you can hop on the news even. It's uh, appearing in local news stations, it's appearing in national news stations, not just Christian stations, secular stations. And this, of course, happened um, years ago in our country. It's happened before across the world. Uh, a particularly interesting event to study is the 1904-1905 revival in Wales that spread across the world, not just 200,000 people coming to Christ in Wales, but touching India in the Cassia Hills, moving from there to South Korea, and of course, today, South Korea has an amazing Christian population. And then moving into China with men like Jonathan Goforth, spreading the word and seeing that flame spread. So we've seen great moves of God in college campuses. Uh, there's a wonderful work called Campus of Flame by J. Edwin Orr, the, the distinguished historian, Ph.D., who also wrote the simple um, tune set to a kind of a Hawaiian melody called Search Me, Oh God, beautiful song, but a brilliant mind who's cataloged the working of God on campuses. So let me ask you, is revival legitimate? Is it okay? Is it a work of God? Well, if we look at the outset of the church, we can see that anytime God steps down and works in the lives of his people, things more or less unusual may come around that. Of course, at the time of Pentecost, we saw the Spirit poured out. The people of God speaking in foreign languages, the wonderful works of God to those who are around them, really quite remarkable. And, you know, is it, is it unusual that we would hear that uh, people attending these meetings and people participating in these meetings are having the chains of sin and of addictions broken in their lives, are being reconciled to those that they've been estranged from, uh, some even reporting physical healing? You say, well, that, that's not how I believe. Well, 
you know, as I said in a previous segment, a lot of times we're going to see things that maybe aren't part of our tradition and understand that what people have been experiencing in their lives prior to revival is just going to be amplified during this season of revival when people are longing to worship and to praise and to be in the presence of God. And, you know, I come from a pretty traditional background, um, pretty uh, organized background, you know, but also a background that is not estranged to revivals. And when God's people get stirred, what happens invariably is they're going to tell people who need Jesus that God loves them, that he has done something amazing in giving his son to pay the price and penalty of their sins, and he's ready and willing to offer you eternal life and to give you a home in heaven for all of eternity and to break the chains of sin in your life, not only paying for the penalty of it, but also giving you a deliverance from it and a life that is joy-filled love-filled, peace-filled. And so, friend, as, as you look up the Asbury Revival, and I hope you will, realize that this can touch you from a great distance. You know, in the past, you had to be there, or you had to hear an account live from somebody who traveled to you. Today, we can, you know, open up Facebook or our uh, news feed, and there we can see right before us this remarkable work of God that is drawing God's people from all over this country together in praying that God would continue that work and change and transform lives. What part are you going to have in that? You know, at Lord & Richards, my business is dedicated to the Lord. He's the senior partner. And what we want to do is glorify Him in all that we do, including how we give advice and, and how we point people in the right direction concerning their plans and their money. But today, you know, in a moment, you're going to get a phone number, and a lot of times we're inviting you to call us and to sit down and talk about your finances and develop a plan, which is so important. It really is important. But, you know, right now, while the Son of God is moving, um, if God would lead you to give us a call, if you'd like to talk to me about your own spiritual need, I'd just be thrilled to counsel you. I'd be thrilled to be a help to you, to pray with you, and to point you to the satisfaction, the joy, the fulfillment, the life that is in Christ. So I hope you'll take me up on my offer today, and God bless you.